We're out here at Chesapeake Campground. This is our fourth fire we've had in our 12th day camping here. Today's going to be a little more trickier. It's actually quite windy and everything got wet today with the thunderstorms. But I do have faith that this fire will start. Just not as easily as it did last week, is all. But I am persistent. And I got, just realized I got a little nifty wind block here. Actually, once it gets started a little bit, the wind will actually help the fire burn, of course, but trying to start it in the wind is a little hard. <laughs> Not impossible, no, because I've learned to say nothing is impossible in this world. But it looks like we got two spots over here burning pretty well that should catch the wood. Okay, and I would say we are good to go. This is just some real thin laminate from some plywood that we shredded up here. Which I did keep out for a little aid. Unfortunately, everything, like I said, is to say the least damp. Most of it's soaked. But I do have faith in myself, and I do have faith in my God, and I do have faith in my father and several other Boy Scout leaders that taught me how to build a campfire. I would say we are good to go at this point. I say this is our 12th or 13th day here in Chesapeake, Virginia, at Chesapeake Campground on George Washington Highway, across from the canal that runs up and down most of the eastern seaboard. But that's it for this video. Peace out, people. Peace. Hello, everyone. Richard here once again with another one of my revelations or whatever you want to call it. Yesterday I was at the Tri Neighborhood Community Garden talking to one of my good friends and major area activist and good, a good overall good person that's willing to help any everyone, my buddy George. Well, me and my buddy George were having a conversation and, and, and we were sitting and talking about unemployment how so many people want to work but they don't have jobs and people are losing their houses and everything. And actually I thought about our overall employment system here in America and I'll get back to some of my experiences at a later date that I based this on and other observations I've made. But I think the way we pay people in this country is actually totally messed up. Anybody that's in a sales job, whether they're selling TVs, mattresses, furniture, or pharmaceuticals, I think salespeople should be on a straight salary. 
pay them fairly and give them the benefits they need for them and their family. But salespeople should not be on commission because how many times have you gone into a mattress store and were talked by and to by a salesperson to buy this marvelous mattress here that's the greatest price to find out when you get home you overpaid, you went past your budget, and on top of that the thing's a piece of junk. Well, so all salespeople, in my opinion, should be on commission. I mean, they should be on a straight salary, paid well, because it ain't an easy job, and they should be educated on the fact of selling. On the other hand, anybody that produces something, whether it be building a pallet like this, or building a tent, or building buildings, houses, anybody that produces anything, anything of any type, which is everything you use, eat out of, drink out of, or use for your entertainment, they should be on what they call piecework, which is a type of commission that you get paid so much for each thing you make. Because let me tell you a little story here. If somebody goes to work and you give them the opportunity to make more because they produce more, they will work harder, and they will dedicate more to your company. And I based this on, when I was 16 to 18 years old, every summer, I worked at International Graphics in New Jersey, and we made those rock and roll frames and mirrors of ACDC, Metallica, and we also did silk screen t-shirts. I'll tell you, that is the job I had, because I was paid three or four cents at the time for each picture frame I stapled together I took the least bathroom breaks of any job I took the least smoke breaks of any job and I did the least talking of any job because I felt I was at work to make money and in my eight or ten hours the more stuff I produced the more money I made so based on that I feel that we should actually switch the way everything's paid in America. Like I said, well, anybody that sells a product should be on salary. Anybody that produces any tangible item should be paid by piecework by what they produce. And also, anybody that works or does anything should have health care for themselves, their family, prescription, dental, and a fair salary so that way they can afford affordable housing and could afford to live in a decent neighborhood with decent schools for their kids to grow up. I know that's a lot to take in at once and it condemns our whole employment system in this country, but this country, America, has to change and become what it used to be. A country of hard-working people to produce good quality products at a fair cost. Peace out, people. Hello again, friends and citizens of the world. This one's going to be a little rough because I thought of it a while back. And I'm going to try to put it all into terms to get the word out there. And I also just remembered to come back to Eisenhower Road System and Obama and Transportation in case I forget. But the energy grid. But that's another video that we'll do next. But really, our country is heading down a dead-end path. We are importing all our jobs overseas to various countries, doesn't matter where, but we are sending our manufacturing, our telemarketing, and a lot of our specialty jobs to other countries. Our country, our school system is lacking in science. Science and technology is what drives the world and it drives commercialism. I, last time I looked, we lived in a democratic, commercialistic country that we produced a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, over the years, I've seen too many friends, relatives, lose their jobs, not get raises for several years. I've seen friends and relatives that are retired not get their Social Security raise for a couple years because they claim there wasn't money, while the rich get richer, and not even the poor, but the working class is getting poor. The poor, they want to be poor and let them be poor and fend for themselves. But your working person in this country deserves better. We do need a change in this country. I've talked to many people over the last several months. I have gone to Occupy Wall Street and Occupy Norfolk events. I've been to tea party events. I have been to local music festivals, local farm markets. I've talked to people in McMansions, people living in trailers and tents at a tent city. And uh, overall, one thing I gotta say to 
Occupy Wall Street and the Tea Party, you both have a lot of good causes. You just got to stop fighting about the minor differences between your causes. Because believe it or not, if you look, both your groups want jobs, they want health care, they want a better education. You know, I, I mean people, stop fighting, band together, and fight for what matters. And I could go on and on about this, and you probably can too, and anybody's welcome to comment on the video on any one of my YouTube or Vimeo channels or whatever. But that's basically all I have to say, is Americans band together, stop fighting, we control the president, the government. President Obama, actually, he has 300 million bosses, because there is 300 million Americans, whether or not you voted, who you voted for, he still works for the people. U.S. Senators, House of Representatives, Governors, they're all public servants. They are supposed to work for us people. We are the ones that go to work. We are the ones that pay their taxes. We are the ones that pay for them to go on fancy vacations and such. So, to our government leaders, do your job and think of your fellow countrymen. Peace out, people. Okay, hello again. Here comes my transportation versus energy energy grid problem. President Obama or Department of Energy people, please listen to me. I do not recall the exact history. I don't recall if it was Roosevelt or Eisenhower that built our interstate system, but when he did, it was also done to provide jobs for Americans after the Great Depression. And that is what got our country out of a depression. Jobs. Jobs for people willing to work. Your hard-working middle class. So, President Obama, Department of Energy officials, Secretary of Energy, whatever you're called, what you people need to do, and this is going to get us off relying on foreign oil, so our poor servicemen don't need to be over there defending the oil fields that are making the house of Saud in Saudi Arabia rich, is President Obama, you need to rebuild our energy grid. Our energy grid has been falling apart. It has not been updated. We rely on natural gas and foreign oil. We drill in the oceans and pollute our fill, our our food. The BP oil spill is a perfect example of that, and that's one of many. That was just a big major screw up by an English corporation. But it's an inherent risk with drilling oil or coal is another dirty industry. What we need to do is start harnessing that sun up there. From what I understood, the sun puts enough energy in one hour to power the expected energy demand of the earth in 2050 for one year. Double population in one hour can provide a year's worth of power. Then we could go to wind power. I don't know the exact statistics on that. As far as using our food for ethanol, corn, why do you think the price of food and everything is so high? Because the ethanol. My friend Milo kind of touched on this years ago that he had to change to convert his VW bus to burn ethanol, that everything had to be changed to nylon. But my dad did some research, my father Max, and what he found out is that the ethanol actually eats the rubber gaskets, the rubber and plastic gaskets in your engine. It is shortening the life of our cars, which of course the, oil, the car industry loves, and a lot of gas is used to make new steel for new cars and etc. etc. So of course the big rich corporations like it, but it actually is good for us and it ain't good for our food supply because I do know another figure that if we converted every farmland in America to burn corn for ethanol, we could not supply half of our country's basic transportation need. That's another scary fact. So why try to grow something? I mean, President Obama, Secretary of the Energy, there is solar power, there is wind power, there is tidal power. There is geothermal power. We are doing experimentations where algae and E. coli can be used to generate biofuels, which are natural. If you're going to grow crops for fuel, then you better do some research and grow either hemp, which is marijuana, which is illegal in our country for some political reason going back to the 30s, and the Hearst Corporation in the timber industry. 
and for discrimination against Mexicans, what you got to do is start tarnishing all these sources, provide money for higher education so we get more PhDs and beyond that invent these new energy means. In fact, there's a way you can put solar cells in space and like fivefold the power and efficiency of the solar cell and we have the technology to beam that energy back to a collector with all kinds of safety systems but the little problem with that that people don't realize that is part of President Reagan's Star Wars system that we obviously don't want. I don't want a weapon so we can vaporize a foreign national or a city. I want energy. I want clean energy and I don't have no kids. My wife ain't got no kids. And honestly, we probably give a crap more about all your kids than your average American that just drives in his SUV that they don't need, let it idle in a Walmart parking lot for an hour while they're in shopping so it's cool when you come out. People of America, I ask you, President Obama, our Secretary of State, Secretary of Energy, I ask you, please wake up and do what's right for your country, your fellow countrymen, and what's good for the peace and the well-being and the good of all the earth. Peace out, people.